Hi, welcome to Convolutional Neural Networks. In the last section, we explored deep neural networks, which required ever more parameters to fit. This section will guide you through one of the most powerful developments in deep learning and let us use some of our knowledge about the problem space to improve the model. First, we're going to explain what a convolutional layer is in a neural net, followed by a TensorFlow example. Then, we'll do the same for what's called a pooling layer. Finally, we'll adapt our font classification model into a convolutional neural net and see how it does. Now let's jump into just what a convolutional layer is. In this video, we're going to walk through using a convolutional layer on an example image. We'll graphically see how a convolution is just a sliding window. Further, we'll learn how to extract multiple features from a window as well as accept multiple layers of input to a window. In a classic dense layer of a neural network, for a given neuron, every input feature gets its own weight. This is great if the input features are totally independent and measure different things, but what if there's structure among your features? The easiest example to imagine this happening is if your input features are pixels from an image. Some pixels are next to each other, others are far away. For tasks like image classification and font classification especially, it often doesn't matter where a small-scale feature occurs in an image. We can look for small-scale features in a larger image by sliding a small window throughout the image, and this is key using the same weight matrix no matter where in the image this window is positioned. In this way, we can always look for the same feature anywhere. Suppose we have a 10 by 10 image on the left here, and we want to slide a 3 by 3 window through it. Typically, Machine learning engineers will slide this window by just one pixel at a time. This is called the stride. So there's some overlap from one window to the next. Then we element-wise multiply our small 3x3 three three weight matrix, W1, into our window, sum the result, and put it through an activation function called F. This first window goes into the first position of a new matrix shown here in orange. The window slid over one uses the same weights, but the result occupies position two. Note that we're essentially using the upper left pixel as the reference point for where we store the result. Slide your window around the whole input image to generate the convolutional output. The dots here are just a reminder that you'll be sliding this window around the whole space, not just the two positions shown here. You might be wondering what happens when our window reaches the edge of the image. The choice is essentially to go between ignoring windows that go over the edge and padding them out with placeholder values. For convolutional layers, the common choice is to pad them out, often with zeros or an average value. This is called same padding in TensorFlow, so-called because the output shape of your convolution remains the same. Note that in your final window, this is really only looking at one value. But that pixel took part in many other positions, so don't feel like it's been left out. The previous slides featured a single set of weights for the sliding window. This essentially lets you compute a sliding feature, but you probably want to look for multiple things in the same window, like vertical or horizontal edges maybe. To extract multiple features, you just need to have additional weight matrices, all initialized differently. These multiple sets of weights are analogous to additional neurons in a densely connected layer. Each matrix of weights, blue and green in the center, will gain you another matrix of output for additional use, shown here in pink and orange on the right. Just as you can pull multiple features out of a convolution, you can put multiple features into such a network. The most obvious example is in an image with multiple colors. You really have a matrix with red values, a matrix with green values, and a matrix with blue values. Your weight matrix is really now a weight tensor of size 3 by 3 by 3 with a window of the same size across the colors. Of course, you can combine all these approaches and this is typically done, especially after your first convolutional layer when you've computed, say, 32 features on the window now you have many input channels for the next layer. In this video, we tackled the practical aspects of understanding convolutions. They can be convoluted, but hopefully no longer confusing. In the next video, 
We're going to apply these concepts to a simple example in TensorFlow.